Hello and thank you for joining us for another SCBA Reflection. Hope you've had a lovely summer and a chance to relax and to, to recuperate. Uh, I've had quite a lovely summer. I've been pottering around in the garage. And one of the things that I've really appreciated is having some cricket back on uh, the TV. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy cricket, as uh, you probably know. Uh, and one of my great sporting heroes is a guy called Jimmy Anderson. Uh, Jimmy Anderson is uh, an England fast bowler, and this summer uh, he reached that remarkable milestone of becoming the first ever cricketer uh, to take 600 test wickets. An incredible uh, achievement. But just before he reached that landmark, um, he had a game where he was a bit off it. Um, <laughs> we all have times like that, don't we? Um, but rather harshly, I thought, one of the pundits said, and I, and I quote, he said, Jimmy was looking a bit old. And you know, as I heard that, and I gasped as he talked about one of my cricketing heroes, I looked in the mirror and I thought, hmm, it's not just Jimmy that's looking a bit old. <laughs> I think COVID's had that effect on quite a lot of us. Uh, but what is it? about being old. What is being old? I don't think it's necessarily something to do with age. I, I've seen people, uh, I've known people in their 80s uh, who just seem so youthful. And I've met youngsters um, who, who frankly seem quite old. So I don't think it's necessarily to do with age. Uh, I came across some time ago this, uh, this piece of writing uh, from Samuel Ullman. Uh, and I think it helps us as we think about this subject of age and oldness. Uh, let, me, let me read it to you. Interestingly, it's entitled Youth. Youth is not a time of life. It is a state of mind. It is not a matter of rosy cheeks, red lips and supple knees. It is a matter of the will, a quality of the imagination, a vigour of the emotions. It is the freshness of the deep springs of life. Youth means a temperamental predominance of courage over timidity, of the appetite for adventure over the love of ease. This often exists in a man of 60 more than a boy of 20. Nobody grows old merely by a number of years. We grow old by deserting our ideals. Years may wrinkle the skin, but to give up enthusiasm wrinkles the soul. Worry, fear, self-distrust bows the heart and turns the spirit back to dust. Whether 60 or 16, there is in every human being's heart the lure of wonder, the unfailing childlike appetite of what's next, and the joy of of the game of living. In the centre of your heart and my heart there is a wireless station. So long as it receives messages of beauty, hope, cheer, courage and power from men and from the infinite, so long are you young. When the aerials are down and your spirit is covered with snows of cynicism and the ice of pessimism, then you are grown old even at 20. But as long as your aerials are up to catch waves of optimism, there is hope you may die young, aged 80. There is so much in that piece of writing. I, I greatly appreciate it and I'd encourage you and me to, uh, to linger a little longer uh, with uh, that writing. Some of the phrases just caught my attention. The lure of wonder. The unfailing childlike appetite of what's next and the joy of the game of living. <laughs> As I allowed those words to wash over me, I instinctively thought of our granddaughter, Penelope. Whenever I have the joy of um, going for a walk with Penelope, it is an adventure every step. Every leaf is a fascinating story for her. Every blade of grass, every flower, 
and puddles. Oh my goodness, puddles. <laughs> and yes, I've had the great joy of jumping in puddles with my granddaughter. She turns the ordinary into extraordinary because there is this vitality, this expectation, this, this thirst for life. Nothing is grey. There's just vibrancy and, and colour. Thomas Merton wrote, If you want to identify me, ask me not where I live or what I like to eat or how I comb my hair, but ask me what I think I'm living for in detail and ask me what I think is keeping me from living fully for the thing I want to live for, that is Christ. Great words. They speak of passion for our Saviour. They talk about a vibrancy in life, of an expectation. And when I was thinking about that, my, my mind turned to this passage in Romans chapter 12. Uh, and this is from the message paraphrase. It says, love from the centre of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert servants of the master. Cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. As we begin this new season together, I'm asking the Lord to fill each of us again with a lure of wonder. This sense of adventure, of seeking out puddles, of playing and of daring to believe in a big, big God. Shall we pray? Father, would you refresh us? Renew our vision of you and your call on our lives. May we drink deep draughts from your wells of salvation. May we gaze upon your beauty and fall silent at your feet. Stir within us again your call to live exclusively for you and your kingdom. May others see something of your beauty and grace in us. Fill us with renewed hope and childlike enthusiasm as we offer up our lives to you again today. And God's people said, Amen.